described the murder as extremely violent. Either you do it for the cause and you take action, or you do it because you want attention. You can't have it both ways. <sighs> and the trailer doesn't even do the movie justice, as great as that trailer was. Lords of Chaos is in theaters this Friday and is starring someone that we are a really big fan of. And DB lost sleep knowing he was coming here this morning. That's so I'm going to let him run it down the line who we got here today. It wasn't because he was coming. It was after watching the movie last night that I lost a little bit of sleep. But yeah. uh, you know him from Scream 4. He was, uh, he, he, was, he, was, he was an expert in horror movies, what you should and shouldn't do. So we got a little game for you about that because I, I love horror movies as well. I also love rock and roll, which this movie is based around. It's actually a crazy true uh, story that I, I don't even know how to put it in, in one paragraph or one phrase. Well, we'll let him do that. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> okay. so he plays this guy, Euronymous, and please welcome Rory Culkin. Rory hey, Culkin. Hey. What hey. number, man? How you doing, Rory? Good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. Heather usually points out, Heather B right here, mm -hmm. whenever we have a guest with, that has what? Beautiful hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice no hair. weave. And it looks detangled, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't ready for it. He thought we would talk about something. Your hair. Oh, we wow. love it. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Do, do you do it yourself, <laughs> man? Or? I do. I do. <laughs> thank you for asking. Have you ever had cornrows? I haven't. <laughs> no, no, no braids, not even braids. No, no, no. Justin Timberlake, circa two thousand one. No, no, I'm not confident enough for that. You so. just let it flow naturally, huh, boy? Right, right. Um, man, how many siblings do you have, bro? I'm one of seven. I'm number seven. You're wow. number seven. That's yeah. a hard number. Little baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, did 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 you have to fight for attention in the house? <laughs> um, yeah, no. The baby usually gets the most. You, you got know? the most. Yeah, yeah. So. So your older siblings, they think you were spoiled. A absolutely. Okay. <laughs> or it's like I'm proud. They're locked in plenty of closets and, you know, yeah. Did y'all get into fist fights as a kid? Uh, it was mostly just like a slap on the back of the head. That was like the uh, the thing for the little brother. Gets a little whack on the back of the head. Yeah. 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 Who was the biggest bully? Ooh, I don't know. It's you, a, you don't want to say? The sisters, actually. The sisters? Yeah, yeah. Brothers were pretty protective, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's what's up, man. Did, so did, did was it destined for you to go into acting, or did you try something else first? Like yeah, I, I, I first started acting when I was nine, um, okay. mm. and I just kind of took to it. I mean, a lot of us were given the options, and not all of us really took to it, but uh, yeah, I'm into it. Uh huh. Your yeah. fam your whole family. Uh, your, you have a family um, history of um, people in entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two of my brothers are are actors as well, and uh, yeah. Yeah. You get tired of talking about your brothers? Not at all. Okay, no, man, I'm really that's a cool kid. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm big. A big fans of their their work, and uh, yeah. Okay, okay, Rory Culkin. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, this is, what do you do for fun, man, outside of work? Uh -huh. um, that's a good question. I don't know. I'm pretty lazy. I'm really into, like, my cats and staying home, so this is weird for me. But, uh, <laughs> really? Okay, <laughs> just speak your truth, baby. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This ain't what you do, right? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a bit of a hermit, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, fuck, I got to sell a movie, too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I just, you know, I just gave you to my home, man. I got to sell it, too? It's interesting. That's the irony sometimes. Some of the folks that you who are get the biggest exposure, whether it's on the screen or on TV, are some of the ones who are just kind Least of... Least amount of interviews, don't really want to do, you know, just kind of stay to themselves. Yeah. And that's cool. Slightly I mean, introverted, yeah, right? Yeah, introverted and staying home with your, your pets and your animals. and <laughs> No, because it's an escape. Like, we talk about it all the time. All of us do other things to escape. Well, Sway just sits on his couch. He right. so, though, Joe. Fishing, yeah. I go fish. I fish. He, he, he cool. fish. Yeah, 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 I cook. OQ uh, sh shoots. He's a photographer. We all do different things. So mm -hmm. it's cool. What kind of cats? Adopted or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got a bunch of them. I can't stop. I should probably stop. I don't want to be the crazy. Wow. How many? Person. Well, I have three now, but I'm trying to get more. I don't know. It's do you have a girlfriend? Because I never meet guys who are single who have cats. Right? It's usually the woman that introduces <laughs> yeah. that. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm actually, I'm a married married man. Oh, okay. Bingo. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, how the hell are you sitting there at home by yourself? You married? Uh, she it's... she works a lot, so I'm, I'm yeah. Pick holding, the right. Holding right. it down. Right choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She she's she makes uh, film. Yeah, she's in camera. So. She's in camera, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, man. Oh, that's that's like a good balance. Yeah. Do you cook, dude? I right. do. I do. Well, what's your what's your cuisine of choice? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> what did I, I just made some nice like African soup. It's coconut soup. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Should give it a try. Look it up. Coconut soup. 
dig it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. like this. But dude. I gotta, I gotta promote this movie. I'm sounding like a softy. I'm no, trying to no, promote no. a metal movie, and <laughs> I'm talking about cats and <laughs> coconut no, this soup. This is more interesting, actually. The <laughs> soup, the cats, well, the wife. Yeah, we'll get to the suicide and the murder in a minute, bro. Trust me. We're, we're trying to ease up on this story. We're trying to get to know you first. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if we go into that movie first, people are gonna right. think, you know, it's that you. that's your Euronymous. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. So that that's all that is. Yeah. You know. Okay. And, and plus, it's it's kind of cool to see you. Oh. You know, we, we've we seen your work, and so we, we don't know when we're going to see you again. You're probably never going to want to do an interview after this, <laughs> so we might as well get it all out right now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, Rory Culkin is here. Um, Lords of Chaos is um, in theaters this Friday. We're going to come back, and we're going to have him break. a breath? So you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got to take a breath, and we're going to talk about this uh, right after this. You want to talk with him, 888-742-3345. Way in the morning, Shade 4 5. Um, uh, who we got in here, DB? My man, Rory Culkin, a.k.a. Euronymous. Okay, so he's starring in this film, Lords of Chaos, and it's, it's based on a 1998 book um, called, of the same name. And it follows a series of crimes that occurred in Oslo, Norway. Now, my connection in Norway is Norwegian halibut and salmon. Um, fish. <laughs> fish. Okay. Uh, but I remember this story, and um, it was surrounding the black metal bands Mayhem and, uh, and Varg, which was uh, a friend of the lead singer, uh, Euronymous, who uh, Rory plays. And so. Well, I want him to tell the story. All right. Yeah. I, I don't, okay. Because you know me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He'll the tell the story, and you're off the hook of talking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell this story, and what, what attracted you to it? Sum it up. Well, um, see, yeah, Lords of Chaos is a true crime story about um, the band called Mayhem. It's Norwegian black metal. And um, they would do these crazy publicity stunts, like they would they would burn down churches and they would um, encourage their fans to burn down churches. And um, yeah, and things sort of escalated in, until it, it eventually led to a murder within the band. And um, yeah, it's just a bizarre, crazy story mm-hmm. that I'm really into. Yeah, yeah, you just summed that up in 40 seconds. Yeah. Maybe you should have did a DB. DB, go ahead. What's the story about? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, DB. Go ahead. Right. So I, I don't want to talk too much about it because you really have to watch the whole thing to understand just how crazy the story is and that it actually happened. And so with the imagery and some of the things that happened, especially with burning of the churches and like the religious stuff and the, the demonic aspect, suicide, murder, and all this, a lot of people might not be comfortable taking on a role like this. And if they do, they need to decompress afterwards because of all the like satanic, you know, symbolism and all that stuff like that. So for you, did you have to deal with that during filming and afterwards or was it just like, yeah, it's just another role? Afterwards, it sort of yeah, hit me hard, but uh, I was attached to the project for years. So I was working on it for a very, very long time and everything became normal. You know, I was referring to myself as Satan for a while and, you know, <laughs> wake up every morning and saying, I'm death. You know, fuck, uh, <laughs> but then after. But explain to people why, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, can't, you can't just leave it out there, man. <laughs> so Euronymous was a, you know, he's, he was a black metal guitarist and he sort of uh, came up with the, the genre, Norwegian black metal. And, um, yeah, he he would promote himself as as death and as chaos and and um, you know he was the prince of darkness he would say and and things like that. So it's a lot of uh, inflating my own ego and um, you know it's probably pretty hard to get along with when we were shooting it. Uh, and then afterwards, it was just like, what did I just do? Like, who, who am I? It was you know, it was a very very strange time afterwards. But during it, it's it's really it's amazing to to you know pump yourself up every morning and, and you know refer to yourself as the prince of darkness you know it's <laughs> i'm gonna miss it you, you, know, do, you, do, you thought that was amazing huh oh so great yeah, yeah look at heather moving further and further <laughs> away from me right now i just see she's just scooting over man i'm saying the lord's <laughs> prayer while you're talking okay <laughs> did, did you get any um i would imagine their fans um probably was hitting you up a lot during this process is that accurate yeah, yeah and and with black metal uh Everyone sort of feels like black metal fans feel like they own the genre and they're very protective of it. And um, you know, in part, part of the genre is to reject pr- promotion and to reject you know people looking at it. And that's why it's sort of hard to listen to. And it's sort of it's built into the music. It's sort of a barrier that if you can't get through this song, then you're not worthy. You know, it's it's very strange mm-hmm. little sub subculture. So um, everyone feels protective of the story, and I'm sure a lot of people 
don't like that we made a movie about it, but I just think it's a fascinating story that I'm trying to, you know, share with people. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a strange crowd. I just went to a black metal show last night. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, very, it's a strange. Were there black people in that black metal crowd? There, there were. We were in Greenpoint. Uh, so yeah, there were. I mean, it depends. You know, I went to a black metal show in in where was it like Ohio, and there was no black people in that show. But uh, yeah, there were. There were. Okay. Yeah. Black people ain't going to that. I thought the movie was over. Why are you still doing research? <laughs> well, we're we're. Uh, <laughs> he, he said it was felt amazing. I'm, <laughs> I'm politicking. I'm trying to gain the okay. trust of these black metal fans. So gotcha. okay, <laughs> I'm going to these okay. shows okay. and okay. shaking hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you talk because Varg, the guy who's uh, your arch, who becomes your arch nemesis in the in the film? Did you talk to him because now he's a free man? I did not talk to Varg. Okay. Uh, no, he's had a problem with this movie since before we even filmed it. Uh, you know, and he's he puts out YouTube videos. Um, you know, but he 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 killed someone brutally. Yeah. And yeah. he's a free man now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so no, I didn't. Okay. Um, okay. Var- no. Varg was the one who uh, killed Euronymous. That's right. His cat. His the person he portrayed. But this happened in real life, so he was sentenced to like 20 21, some, 21 and he years, 14. And, and he only served 14. And, and Varg went over to Euronymous' apartment and murdered him in self-defense, is what he says. Uh-huh. So it's but a, didn't, they, didn't he stab him in a skull or something? He stabbed him 36 <laughs> times yeah. uh, after he went to his apartment. Um, and, you know, I like I said, I was attached to this for a long time. I did a lot of research. I read police reports, and, you know, I saw the picture of Euronymous's body and uh he's in pajamas you know he just cut all of his hair off he was sort of moving on from the genre and he was getting really into electronic music and um you know and in the picture he looks like a boy he looks like he was in pajamas and he wasn't ready to try to hurt someone yeah you know what i mean it does not seem like he was trying to kill varg uh but i won't i won't get into you it. won't get into that because <laughs> varg is out now right all right um <laughs> Now, but Euronymous, um, before his death, um, there was a suicide in the in the group, right? Mm-hmm. And Euronymous saw the suicide as a way to to even promote the group even further. So when he found the band member, he kind of rearranged things and took pictures of him mm-hmm. dead, right? Right. And what the hell? Yeah, and he used it as the album cover. Uh, was the lead singer's dead? body was the, was the album cover um right. and that's just part of the promotion i mean <laughs> I, it's it's really yeah. unfortunate and terrible yeah. horrific stuff that they did you know burning down churches but that's how i learned about them you know they, they got on american tv because they did this these outrageous things and oh. you know ozzy was biting heads off of animals on stage and they were like we need to up the ante you know we need to you know i think i think euronymous was angling to be the next ozzy osbourne or you know things like that and um that's selling your soul damn shit. i was gonna <laughs> say like with you studying so much about it like say in hip-hop you make your first album you like mom look grandma i'm about to buy you a house we're about to be paid like in this culture there's no what do you bring home to your parents like <laughs> dead bodies and shit like what's the the payoff Bats. <laughs> Like, what are they? Are there any parents around? Is there family yeah. or? Yeah, they you know middle class Norwegian um, kids that had great upbringing. Even like Euronymous's father is the one that funded his his record store. Um, they were very supportive. They were you know, and these guys, these kids had no reason to to lash out the way they did. They were just mm-hmm. trying to make a name for themselves. I mean, they weren't oppressed or anything. They had everything going for them, uh, and that's what's so fascinating about it. I think yeah, see, see rich kids man do that. Problems. Yeah, yeah, Richard, you know, they want to be famous. You know, you see kids right now do that on Instagram on, on Insta, and yeah. you know doing anything in their power to bring attention to themselves right. um, which why did you think it was important to tell this story and do this movie um, it, I'm I find myself just really attracted to bizarre behavior and um, so yeah it was it was just I, I wanted to find out why they were doing these things mm-hmm. and I wanted answers myself and um, once I found them I wanted to share it and uh, yeah it's just a very strange story and, and the people that do know about it uh, light up when they find out that I, you know, I've made a, a movie about it. So um, I'm just excited to to share the story. It's it's strange. Rory Culkin is here. What do you, what do you dream about, man? <laughs> <laughs> What's on your mind, brother? Uh, I I actually had a when we were shooting, I had a dream that Euronymous came to me, mm-hmm. and uh, I was like asking for his blessing, uh, and I'm not sure he gave it to me, but he, uh, he, he it was a bizarre dream. He he told me he didn't realize he was dead until recently. He was like, I thought I thought I was alive. I thought I had a wife and kids, and then I realized, oh, I'm dead, and I haven't been on this earth in 20 years. And it, 
and I woke up and then I had to shoot the scene where he was murdered and it was just very confusing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> hey man, it's been real, hey, Rory. Rory. Hey man, good to Peace meet you, Rory. Uh, <laughs> but before you do, Rory. before you go, man, king of horror, uh, we came up with a game for you and it's called This is the Horror and Metal Quiz. Your favorite movie, your favorite album, your favorite uh, whatever. This is the ultimate trivia game, right now on Sway in the morning. You lose. Good day. Sir. All right, Rory. So this is horror and heavy metal, two of my favorite subjects that I hope you're knowledgeable on. So tell me when you're ready. All right, I'm ready. All right, here we go. In the 1980 classic The Shining, a family is hired as caretakers of the Overlook Hotel located where? Washington, California, Colorado, or Idaho? Colorado. You are correct. Damn. Hello. Which Hollywood A-lister made his acting debut in the late great Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street? Was it Robert Downey Jr., Johnny Depp, Keanu Reeves, or Brad Pitt? Johnny Depp. You are correct. Damn. Oh. All right, okay. Which rock and roll icon made a cameo in Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, and John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness? Was it Alice Cooper, Gene Simmons, Axl Rose, or James Hetfield? Alice Cooper. You are correct. Oh, oh, shit. oh man, he's the king of horror. Oh, boy, good. <laughs> All right. In Sam Raimi's Evil Dead franchise, what is the main character Ash's iconic catchphrase? Is it Coolio, Saucy, Puyaka, or Groovy? Oh no, Groovy? Shit! Damn! Damn. He got it, guess it. Yeah. Nice. Wow. <laughs> I, mean, I knew that. that all right, all right. Final one. The song Hellraiser, which was on the soundtrack of Hellraiser 3, was performed by what band? Slayer, Motorhead, Iron Maiden, or Ozzy Osbourne? Slayer? Bro! Oh! He is human. Motorhead. Uh, I knew he, man, I knew he didn't know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Now nah, you pass our test, Rory. Man, great to meet you. Yeah, for real. Thank you. Really Thank you great so much. to meet you. And and, 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 and yo, Sarah's your wife, right? That's right. Okay, tell Sarah, uh, man, if she ever needs Give help, a hug. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she needs somebody to talk to. Oh, yeah. She needs to seek refuge. We're here for her, okay? <laughs> Sorry for weirding you guys out. <laughs> no, 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 not at all, bro. Nah, it's it's, 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 it's cool. amazing you're able yeah. to take on a role so complex and, and really deliver with mm -hmm, that. That's a mm -hmm. testament to your skill set. You're an actor, so you're going to take on whatever character you want to. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Man. Absolutely. Rory Culkin, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a count, black.